What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the RGR Football Channel. This is tonight, Monday night Q&A. Right now, I am by myself. Ryan is running back from town. His internet back home is working, so he will be here momentarily. Give him some time. And also give him a big round of applause because without Ryan, today, the draft guide would not have dropped. And when he gets here, we're going to give him a big warm welcome and big shout out to him because the Athletic Matrix and the draft guide is now available. Obviously, wrote RGR23 is not the code for it, but you guys can head on over to RogueAPC.com right now and get the Athletic Matrix and draft guide combo. RGR is the code you're going to want to use to get your guys' discount on that right now. We're going to continue to update that all the way through to the draft. We've got some names that we've left off, but if you guys want to get in that right now, please go ahead and head on over to RGR, or excuse me, RogueAPC.com and get your draft guide that myself, Ryan, Jeff Porter, and our guy EJ Holt have worked for the last three plus months to fill out these guides, these grades, and get everything done. So. Thank Ryan for that because it was a fantastic job on him rushing to get all of that done today. And obviously, this whole point, the the talk today about the defense, right? We've seen kind of Chris Jones be very adamant on Twitter recently about you know the big reason he's back is to not only wants to finish his his uh, career in Kansas City, but to get that three peat. He's a big fan of Mike Dana, the bringing back Mike Dana move. Right now, it feels like the Chiefs are really happy bringing their own players back. Derek Nadi and all, all the other guys that they have brought back. Tershawn Wharton as well. Unless I'm wrong there. Again, my, I, you guys are going to have to give me a little bit of a, a re reprieve because my brain is on fire. It's been melted for the last couple of months with all these draft prospects. So some of the names, um, the re-signings that don't come through, it, it all gets kind of mushed together. But this draft is going to be pushing down some really good defensive players because the offense is so good and so high. It's going to make things different. If you guys joined me last night on the mock draft for the Sunday night, you saw that we took a defensive tackle at 32. If you wait there, 10 tackles went, and the wide receiver pool, in my opinion, you could wait for a little bit. So and went with Johnny Newton out of uh, uh, Illinois. So just kind of show you guys that there are some things that could happen in this draft class that we're not prepared for. And watching 10 tackles go in the first round does kind of give you that idea of anything can happen in this first round and why I floated the idea of possibly trading up with the Seattle Seahawks at 16 to go and get a tackle if they allow that trade to happen. So defense is going to be heating up. They're going to have some playmakers coming up. Felix Enrique Uzama is going to have a big day or excuse me, a big year this year. He's going to be transitioning to playing, starting most of the time, especially with Charles Amenehue on injured reserve to start the year most likely. <clears throat> Corners, going to have to step up. Trent McDuffie, we're going to see what his role is. And then the linebacker crew, we know and expect Cam Jones to kind of take that next spot available with Willie Gay not in town anymore. They brought back Drew Tranquil, Mike, um, excuse me, Nick Bolton is still there. And then the Ascension still of Leo Chanel. So we are going to be depth, you know, in-depthly trying to figure out how the Chiefs can continue to get better and can continue to improve their defense or at least keep it the same level that it was last year with a couple of key players that were on that team no longer in Kansas City. So I'm excited to see what Ryan's got to say about the defense because this defensive tackle class is very good. Is very, very good. So it wouldn't surprise me to see the Chiefs go ahead and grab one of them on day two. Or if things don't work out, maybe tap, tap, tap one at 32. So let's go ahead, start off with some questions. You guys have been firing them in there. And obviously, if you guys want to, you may also support the channel by giving us some super chats. Those will always be answered every single night. Zero questions asked. So um, the support you guys continuously give us is fantastic. And that is one other way outside of watching and then getting your own draft guide that you can help us. Would you like to say goodnight, Avery? Yeah, come here. Don't mind me. Just going to take a second here to say goodnight to my daughter. Ryan, I'll be here soon. But can I have a hug and a kiss? Oh, kiss. Okay. Mwah. Thank you. I love you. 
can eat the cheesecake. Yes, I know you can. Our you picture. want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. Be good for your mom. <laughs> Don't worry. When you start to talk about the Chiefs, she'll be uh, all over this. Thank you. All right, guys. I, I promise you, she's going to be like in front of the camera all the time when, you know, when she gets older. Growing up around it is only is only going to make things worse. But uh, start off right at the top here with Steve. Thank you very much for your question, you guys. Another way you can support us is becoming a member. There is a join button, I believe, down over here. And if you guys get in at the rookie level, that is where rookie level, level and above, you can get into that Discord where all of our members are talking on the regular. We have tons and tons of channels in there for you guys to you know talk back and forth. You can always at myself. Ryan, any, any member of the team on Discord as well. For whatever reason, my Discord you know notifications don't always work, so I am trying to figure out why they don't just pop up on my phone. I'll get to the bottom of that, and you guys can have a direct line, <clears throat> excuse me, to me through there as well. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Who are some Chiefs players who could step up and have good seasons this coming year? So I think right off the top, Leo Chanel is going to have an interesting, you know situation because without Willie Gay, who's going to be the starting guys? I know I, I said Cam Jones likely is that guy, but Leo Chanel's got experience. He's been playing a lot more. And last year he proved that he should be on the field more. So it wouldn't shock me to see him be another guy that continues to get more play. But the, you know, for me, the big answer is Felix and Adike Uzama, who has all the tools to be a legitimate defensive end in the NFL. But we're going to see if he's learned more. Like the big play he made in the Super Bowl, he has to make more plays like that against the run because I do think that he's got all of the tools to be able to be an impact pass rusher and use his speed to power, his tools, his toolbox, his length, all those things. So I think he's going to have a big season to, to show that he can be that. Um, on the offensive side, I mean, there's only really one answer to this question, and it's a big sink or swim question because I still believe in the slot player that is slot Sky Moore to be able to play in the slot, but the Chiefs are going to be drafting a wide receiver, There's and they're probably going to bring in another veteran wide receiver. So with experience, it does not look like he's going to get a huge opportunity, but when you get those opportunities, you have to make do on it. But I don't expect him to, again, be a starter this year. I expect, you know, the rookie – Rashi Rice, whatever happens with that situation, again, we'll find out more information as it comes available to us. But really, that's what this is, what it comes down to. And, and I expect Marquise Brown to have a very good season. I really do. I think he's going to be an excellent player in this offense and specifically with the space that you have um, afforded to you from Andy, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey. I think he can do a really nice job of taking advantage of that. I appreciate your question, Steve. Thank you very much. Infopocalypse, you got a couple of them right back to back here. Um, thank you very much for your question. If KC requires another safety, Simmons acquires another safety, Simmons or draft pick, does that mean Connor is playing cornerback? That doesn't, no, it doesn't mean that at all. Um, specifically because unless he's going to be a slot guy and Trent McDuffie's going to be on the outside, which I wouldn't be mad at, he's still going to be the third the third safety. Like I still think they're going to be rotating him in because of experience. And if they bring Simmons in, then that changes the dynamic a little bit, but it would kind of bump him down to maybe four or the slot position, which would indicate to me that they feel comfortable enough to kick Trent McDuffie outside. Um, the only way I don't see Connor being that third safety is if it's like a guy like Simmons who's played and proven to be that guy, then maybe they kick things down. But other than that, I think that cook has, excuse me, did a, Connor has the inside track there for sure. And then here's your next one. With Allegretti gone, is it possible Casey takes two interior offensive linemen in the late to mid, uh, mid to late rounds? I don't necessarily think two of them. Um, I think you could see a couple of guys with flexibility um, tackle all the way to you know, interior. I think that, you know, we, last night we, we drafted Dominic Pooney in the third round who can play all five positions with that versatility. So it wouldn't shock me to see an interior offensive lineman at some point, but definitely an offensive lineman <clears throat> tackle with flexibility to go inside for sure. Almost, I think, guaranteed at this point. I appreciate you, Info. Metal Rocker, how's it going? And 
again, you guys, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Ryan will be here when he gets here. I'm not entirely sure when that's going to be, but we will make him feel welcome. We'll give him a big round of applause because he absolutely deserves it for everything that he's worked with on this draft guide. And again, don't forget to go to rogueapc.com right now. Use the code RGR and get yourself a discount on the draft guide. And you also get that uh, athletic matrix in, um, as well. It's included in that. Uh, Metal Rocker, thank you for your question. Hey, Dan. Hey, Ryan. Well, unfortunately, Ryan's not here, but he'll be here soon, I hope. <laughs> Great to see you guys. Where did you see Casey? Where do you see Casey going in the rounds, uh, three rounds of the draft? I'm thinking they go wide receiver in the first, offensive line in the second, and a possible tight end and defense tackle in the third. So, as demonstrated last night, the tackle class can get dried up very quickly. The best players can go in the first round. There were 10, if you count, Jordan Morgan and Graham Barton as tackles, and you're going to draft them to play at tackle. Ten of them went in the first round on last night's mock draft that we did. So it forced us to pivot. That was a very interesting situation. So it, it becomes difficult to get that tackle player if you're not going to trade up unless someone does fall at 32. And it's a risky thing to do, right? It's a risky thing to wait until 32 to get your guy. So that does make things difficult. I still think it's, I, I'm more of Ryan's opinion now that it's going to be tackle in the first round, regardless of what they have to do, then wide receiver, and then defensive tackle. That's how I think it's going to go myself. Appreciate you, man. John, thank you, man. Thank you for being here tonight. After watching my mock, uh, you will, will you be disappointed if the Chiefs don't trade up for a key left tackle? I uh, don't like Taylor to left. I fear bringing Donovan back and feel Morris isn't ready. So it's starting to feel that way, right? It's starting to feel like almost uh, an unquestioned thing that Donovan Smith will be back in Kansas City next year. Just you never really know if you're going to be able to trade up. I'm not going to be disappointed if they can't trade up. That's just how things work. You never can guarantee on trading up to be able to get uh, the player that you want. So I'm hopeful that tackles don't just go off the board like they have been in mocks, that hopefully some of these players, um, some of the defensive players start to draw some attention as well because they're good players, but this tackle class is so good and the, you know, the NFL needs tackles that it really could be a situation where they're outgunned to be able to get up and then you end up having to draft a traits-based guy on day two bringing in Donovan Smith, if you really don't think that Wanya Morris is ready, it's it's tough. It's tough. It really does get – it gets kind of dicey pretty quickly. So I'm not going to be super disappointed, but it would be upsetting if they weren't able to get a tackle in the first round specifically because of how the drop-off is. And, and you know, maybe, maybe I'm just wrong about that. Maybe they find a, a gem somewhere and they prove me wrong. But it definitely feels that way. Appreciate you. So I just want to quickly go over here to Greg. Thank you very much for the 50 spot, man. That is, is fantastic. I appreciate you so much, Ryan, as well, because we don't we can't do this one without you. And we wouldn't want to do it without you guys. Like we do this for you as much as everything that we learn getting out of it. So thank you very much for the super chat. And I appreciate you very much for saying that. It's it's everything that we learn that we try to pass on to you guys and we're always learning, always growing, and trying our best with everything that we have. So, again, I, I can't thank you enough for the support. And this, I'll leave it in the in the queue here so Ryan can see it as well because that's it's always generous and we appreciate it so much, so much. All right, Metal Rocker, thank you again for your, your another question. And also, sorry, my apologies, uh, Greg. If you have a question, make sure to throw it in the chat, okay? So we can we can answer that that, that question you've got because I would love to to answer anything you've got that, that that you have to to say. So just make sure you do that if you have a question. I wanted your thoughts on the news that Casey has um, had top thirty visits with both Sanat and Hall Jr. headed. Um, ahead of the draft, as well as having to visit with Eric All and Sanders, despite not really needing one right now. Hall Jr. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you talking about Michael Hall Jr.? Because that's the only Hall Jr. that I know. <laughs> um, if Hall Jr. is a tight end, then I don't know who he is. But 
I think they're trying to get as much information on these players as they can. And I think that uh, specifically Ben Sinat's getting a lot of buzz lately. I think he's going to go on day two specifically with his ability to play multiple types of roles with wide receiver and tight end and possible H back situations, the effort he, he presents and presents. And honestly, the run after catch stuff is really good for him. So I think that they're just doing their due diligence. They want to get as much information on these players as they can. And if things don't end up working out the way they want it to in the draft, they can always do something different and go tight end. What's up? What's up? Huh? What you doing? Okay, sweetie. I, I thank you very much. I appreciate it. But can you please go back to your room and brush your teeth? No. Okay. I'll I'll let him know. Okay. I promise. Yay. Good night, sweetheart. Yay. <laughs> uh, sometimes, man, kids are so adorable. Absolutely adorable. Um, so yeah, I think that they're looking for information. That's how they use their 30, their top 30 visits. They do a lot of like lower division two school players as well, just to get as much information as they possibly can. That's all I would, I would put into that. I still don't necessarily expect them to draft a tight end on day one or day two. So you, you never know, but I would say no at this point, if it were me, <laughs> appreciate it metal. Alex the Great, thank you for your question. Can you explain the qualities and skill sets that make a, good, a prospect a right tackle versus a left tackle? And does this change if you have a left-handed quarterback? Love the content. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much. So today's NFL is a little bit different. It used to be you needed those athletic, long, and powerful left tackles to protect the blind side, right? The movie, the whole Joe Theismann stuff, the injury, you couldn't see the guy coming. Um, and typically, the best edge players used to play over the left-hand side. So when you're looking and it's still, there are still some things, some of that true today, but there's still so many good players, so many good athletes and defensive ends are getting better in general that it's not as important to have that left tackle versus a right tackle. And in the basis, in the, the idealistic terms of the word, those left tackles they need to be more athletic and they need to be, be able to handle speed, quickness, bend more so than a right tackle typically would because they would pair a defensive end that has that speed, that quickness, that agility with a powerful tackle or a powerful defensive end to crush the pocket and move the quarterback to those speed, speed guys or vice versa, however you want to do it in terms of speed guy off the uh, left side and then move the quarterback to the right to a guy who's not going to win as quickly. But today's NFL is a little different. Um, but still, the Chiefs specifically do prefer tackles that are athletic. They just, they do, especially because they want to run their zone and get outside zone and, and things like that. We've seen them be a little bit different with Orlando Brown. They played more power. Um, Donovan Smith's more athletic um, than he is, but still not as elite, especially after his injuries. So, and Wanya Morris is an athletic tackle. Um, John Jawan Taylor is an athletic tackle. So for Casey specifically, they prefer athletes. And if they don't have athletes, they want tactician, tacticians, tacticians like Mitchell Schwartz, who didn't have the athleticism per se, but he was so well studied. He used his hands fantastic and knew exactly what was coming his way and didn't have to worry about it. So if you're thinking about the di the differences, think back to when Eric Fisher played left tackle and when Mitchell Schwartz played right tackle. That's how it kind of used to look with the athletic guy at left and the maybe not so athletic, but more of the tactician can handle the power ability and knew what he was doing a little bit differently, if that makes any sense to you. I hope that was a decent enough explanation, <laughs> uh, Brenda. So again, apologies, Ryan currently is not here. He's, he's working to get here, set his uh, internet up and be able to get on with us. But I can answer for myself. No, I have zero. And I can also answer for Ryan. We have zero Yale film. Like we have none. It's not easy to get. And there's nothing out there with Kieran as anywhere. So 
Sorry, uh, Brenda, we would like to be able to help you out there because we want to get eyes on him too, but we have been unable to do so. Jeremy, thank you very much for, one, being a member, being here tonight, and asking a question. As always, in your opinion, which is more likely with the remaining cap space? Chiefs sign another high-end, uh, high-tier player, or the Chiefs work on extensions of their, and their own signed players? So there's not very many high-end players out there that are left that are going to get high-end contracts. That just doesn't really work for them. I still think they have enough cap space to technically do both. But if this offseason has shown us anything, it's that they would prefer to extend their own and and get that done. I just don't know what the negotiation process is because I would think that Creed Humphrey would be next in line to get that extension. Um, it should be done pretty soon. I think Nick Bolton's up for it as well. Ryan can correct me when he gets here um, on the, the contract stuff. But I would, st I would lean more towards the Chiefs working on extensions and signing their own players. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Monday evening. Uh, the stress of draft season is almost over. We still have, what, three weeks until the draft? But the grind is over. The grind is over. I don't have to stay up every single night to get stuff done. I will tonight, though. So that's always fun. DC Jayhawk, what's going on? Thank you for your question. Is it just me, or is this tackle class very underwhelming? I don't know if I see the value in a trade-up in the first. Why does Syracuse look the better option in round one? Um, I think the depth-wise is, is not very good, but the first round is likely the best that we're going to see in a very long time. They have, like I said, we're going to see probably 10 offensive linemen go in the first round. It's an excellent top-end class. The depth for tackle specifically isn't really there. At left, you have some guys that played right tackle. Um, Roger Rosengarten and Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame. There, there are some other guys, uh, Javon Foster out of Missouri, who's probably more of a right tackle as well and, and things like that. But that left tackle um, depth goes very quickly after the first, and I think that the top-end talent is excellent. So I will I'll disagree with you a little bit there, and, and the depth at wide receiver is vast. It's very vast, and it's very good, as it usually is. Lee, thank you for your question. Which offensive tackle is realistic for us in round one? Um, also, a worthy Mitchell M um, McConnell. Might be missing this one. Uh, Pearsall, who would you take? So, worthy Mitchell. I don't know the McConnell. I might be missing a player, but uh, that's us. I'll just answer the question from what I can understand. Um, so realistically, I think you can trade up on, depending on the fall, again, this is, this is how it falls. If there is a trade up possible, um, from what I understand, Olu Fushanu is, is looking like he might fall down the board a little bit. You might be able to get up there and get him, but the, um, the other guy that you might be able to take is Troy Fatanu in a trade up. I think those two are the guys you ain't, you look for. And at 32, you know, for me, um, oh, McConkey, you're probably right about that doctor. That's McConkey. Okay, I can answer that part. Um, at 32, it's Kingsley Suomatia, who I, uh, Suomatia, who I would be looking at at 32 to fall there and be able to, to take him and play him at left tackle. Maybe not immediately, but at some point during the season, because I believe he has all the traits to be an NFL tackle, a legit NFL tackle, having that experience, uh, left and right. It pay, pays dividends for him. And I think in Kansas City scheme, he would make a lot of sense. And to answer your question about either Worthy Mitchell, um, McConkey, or Pearsall, I think that the best fit in terms of what they might be looking for would, would be Worthy. But AD Mitchell as an ex receiver, if you can get him to play, you know, up to his ability and the work ethic and things like that. Um, I think I would rather have him overall if they want him to be an X because I do think the route running is all there, the athletic ability. I don't think the speed is necessarily because the speed doesn't show up on tape, but he's got some problems with effort. And if you can fix that, I think he's going to be an excellent player. Um, I, I like I like Ladd and I love Ricky. I, I, like, I like all these receivers. I think that Worthy is the best fit specifically to replace what I think um, Hollywood Brown is going to bring to this offense this year. Appreciate you, Lee. 
Ruthless Monk. Thank you for your question. RGR draft comparison. You know it was coming here with oh, what's the differences and similarities between Laporta and Jatavian Sanders. Well, oh boy, Sam Laporta is everything that people think Jatavian Sanders is. Like L Sam Laporta is a matchup nightmare. He's got size. He has actual speed. He catches everything. He plays with great effort, and he gives you 100%. I don't think Jatavian Sanders is very good. I think that Texas propped him up got him easy situations and that he's not a very good route runner. He's not a good athlete and he's not very fast. I think he's, I think Laporta is two, three times the player that Sanders is. Hope I didn't crush some things for you there. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, Kev, thank you very much. A random two-part question. If offered, would y'all take a position on an NFL team like in the scouting department? Uh, part two, what would be your ideal job in the NFL? So, yes, uh, yes, the answer is yes to that. If someone comes offering us to be on a team to do scouting, the answer is yes. But as a stay-at-home father, I would have to do most of that remotely because I do not have the ability to just ride around the country and do that. Um, and that would be my ideal position and my ideal job is right now, I'm my, my number one priority is my daughter. Number two is my family, everything. And the number three is work. So in order to do what a lot of these players, scouts and things like that, that are part of teams do is they have to be able to drop everything and go on countless scouting trips and leave all the time. So I, I would need to be able to re work remotely, do my scouting here and every now and then take trips if I need to. Um, that would be ideal for me, Kev. But that is that is the goal here. Like That is the goal here to eventually someday uh, work in the league to be able to legitimately be a scout. Because I think that one day um, if I continue to work as hard as I do and learn as much as I've been learning, it's it'll be there. It'll be there. Uh, Colson, thank you very much. Is isn't it such a pain having to talk about trading up in 32? Let's hope we have to keep doing this every year. Exactly. Like that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. People are talking about why trade your your future first round pick. Well, honestly, because if it's 32 next year, I don't care that much. I don't care that much about it. If we're always talking about 32, that's all that matters. I mean, yeah, Super Bowls. Super Bowl or bust every single year. And it's fantastic having to talk about that. So I, I appreciate the, the sentiment. And we always have to remind ourselves that we have to talk about this because the Chiefs are so good. And they continuously find themselves with this situation where, oh, they might have to trade up to get their guy. It just, it just, it's just crazy like that. Um, and, and Nikki, I would take Avery with me, but she's got school. Like I, 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 I'm not taking her out of school multiple times a year to go do that stuff with me or her her, you know, her education is very, very important to me as well. So I love you. It's not realistic for me. All right, JC, appreciate you. Thank you for your question. After signing Dana and saving cap for the draft, the Chiefs have around $10 million in space, I think. Oh, what else are we looking to do with that space? I would imagine that they're going to bring in a veteran wide receiver at some point. But for the most part, I do think that they're going to be looking to extend somebody someone's going to get an extension or someone's going to be brought in and the rest of that money will be used to sign their draft uh their, their draft class so those are the, the things that i'm looking for i don't necessarily think they have to make a move anywhere else they maybe maybe they bring in a safety but i think they're pretty comfortable with cook reed and connor right now i don't think they have to bring one in they might draft one though so there's always that possibility as well ocean thank you very much uh I hope you and Ryan are having a, a good back and forth with your email experiences. If you're fi film in your film experience, what has been the hardest college to get tape on this season? Heard you mentioned Yale before, but what others? Anything that's not like Power Five, uh, and even some of the Power Five schools are tough to get to. So anything, uh, anything that hasn't been seen a ton of because. If you don't have a lot of eyes on it, it, a lot of people aren't looking for that type of film. So, and even the one, even the film that we do have is hard to get eyes on. It's hard to get because it's just so kept behind a paywall. 
the NCAA like doesn't want to make money off it, which makes no sense because they're all about making money. Hey, <clears throat> hey, hey, oh. we made it. <laughs> We're alive. Ryan is here. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, oh, I'm here. Had to restart the whole house. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be late, folks. Nice to see you. No, no, don't let him say sorry. Don't let him say sorry, all y'all. Please in the chat, give him some round of applause for all the hard work that he did to put the draft guide out today. I don't think he slept for five months, but it's done. <laughs> <laughs> it is done. And kudos to you and EJ and Jeff. And uh, getting it done has been a drag. For those of you who don't know, I do live in Colorado. And when you heard on the news last night, there are 150,000 people without power in Colorado. I was one of them. <laughs> So the draft guide was put together in the truck so I could charge the laptop. Uh, I had to go down and, and break into my dad's, uh, make sure his go. power come back on first. And so it's been a long day. Welcome back. Are you guys having fun yet? Yeah, I think so. I'm a little monotone, but, you know, I think that they, they, they deal with it. That's awesome. Hey, we, we're all that way. I nice feel I everyone. feel like right now it's worse because like my brain's <laughs> fried too. So I'm yeah. just like powering through and forgetting people that I draft like on the mock draft last night I took Javon Baker and then I went back over I'm like I can't remember who I drafted <laughs> <There's too many laughs> names. I know that feeling oh I resemble that remark and I just wanted to I did cover this but we we got a fantastic super chat here from Greg I wanted you to see it to be able to oh, I don't know cool. if he's still in here but um obviously we I didn't he also didn't ask ask a question but you know I just I felt like you should. Thank you, you. Wanted to, you'd want to see that too. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Greg. Very much appreciate you. Uh, I, I don't know what it's for, but I'm glad. Um, I'm excited <laughs> because if it's if it's for the draft guide, be happy because uh, you know it, it really has been a conglomeration of our efforts over the last few years with EJ coming on board full time and getting a lot of things oh, done. Um, you know, it freed Dan and I have to do a, a couple less positions this year. Um, and I couldn't know, think of that. I couldn't think of enough for that. Like that was last year. I was doing like half of the entire class. <laughs> like each was not, was not ideal. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was tough. And the amount of traveling I've had to do for family this year, I, I couldn't get it done without, without EJ stepping up. And obviously without you, um, we still both did like four position groups or conglomerated on a couple of them and did, did our five. own. I did Damn. five. <laughs> this is why you win. Oh man. So in the end, we got it done. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I'll, I'll put it on screen here in a minute. But Greg, thank you for the support as yes. always. Um, I, I'll pull that up here. I, I just got everything turned on in the house, so I, I still got to pull it up so we can show it. But uh, what were you guys talking about? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I think the last question that I, I went over about is this one right here. Trying to find film <laughs> because it's <laughs> it is damn near impossible to do. Um, I, like I guess I was talking about anything outside of big games in the Power Five big teams in the power five because even some power five teams are tough to get film on like you can't yeah. see anything that's minnesota Rutgers. like there, there's none there's nothing there <laughs> it's definitely been a challenge um for those of you who want it in fact i see caroline thank you very much uh, i am so sorry this this season's been crazy and that's why i haven't gotten back to you yet um it just everything's been left and right uh yale in particular that you bring up here i just got the film three days ago uh, oh. and obviously we were shifted over and I was I was in build mode for the draft guide and the and the matrix the matrix came out two days ago um got this out today obviously a ton of work and so I have to kind of like set a set point so I can start making the products uh and I didn't get to it but I'm gonna try to do an addendum I'm gonna go back watch him uh Dan you just did a couple extra d-line guys today um, I've got an edge rusher that I'm going to keep digging on and bribe some people to get me film. I don't know. I'm throwing cash around now so that we all can have an idea. Cause, <laughs> uh, Marshawn Nealon's his name and he has met with the chiefs at least twice that I'm aware of. So, uh, he's definitely a guy that I need to get. So it is what it is. The worst part is having to wait on other people to upload film. It's tough. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I can't say any more than that. That's enough to say. Now, listen, if you guys do want to see it, I was able to pull it up. Um, I just want to give you a quick look. Uh, I don't have much up there in terms of uh, promo for it yet, just the cover, basically. Um, so if you go in and you go to Rogue APC, you'll be able to get over there. 
and uh let's see let me take that down and you just come in here and it's just a, it's a little whirling dervish it's going to go back and forth between the matrix and the draft guide if you click on either of them it'll take you to the product page and you can go ahead and grab it then um I, I know I, I can't take quantity off. I know nobody wants to buy multiple of them, so don't worry about that. But uh, <laughs> quantity is part of the website. You just click it and use the code RGR. You'll get a discount in there. Um, I always do that for you guys because you rock and you are always there for us. And I want to make sure that you get your due out of it. Um, but this one's this one's great because with all the extra film work that we've been able to do the last two years, we've got more comprehensive comparisons and the algorithms I've been working on those in the off season. And as we go through coupon says it expired DC. Okay. I'll have to reset that. I shouldn't have, but who, who knows at this point. <laughs> um, so hold off for a couple of minutes. Um, I've been doing enough things. I might've misclicked that. I will get it sorted out, but this one's really cool because as we've gotten the algorithms more mature, we're getting the fact that we went from what, what I originally did was analytics Obviously, with Dan and I venturing now into the film side and being able to do that consistently, and I wanted to put it over here. Yeah, uh, being able to do it consistently makes it so that we can actually form the the algorithms that reflect what different teams do. Now, every team is different in the league. That's why the draft is never exactly what we think it is. But it's getting us closer and closer to what real teams do. And my algorithms are mine. Yeah, they they are not uh, derived from a team, so they're going to be a little bit different. And you're going to see some guys that we're after, as we take the film grades and then we take the production grades and we put in the athletic matrix as it all comes together. You're going to see our boards different than anyone else's, just like every team is. So there are going to be some some theories there. Uh, Dan did a hell of a job on the wide receiver group this year, and it's the most consistent and concise mm -hmm. wide receiver group we've ever had. And that's mm -hmm. thanks to you, Dan, because of your effort. Thank you. I appreciate you, dude. It's <laughs> it's truly impressive. It's it, a lot of work, it gives guys. Us, it, oh, good God, it is. But it gives us that consistency. And so when, even adding in the matrix and adding in the production, you've done enough to build that into your film grades that most people in media don't do, is it gives us a more direct and a more appreciative mm -hmm. and a more accurate ranking. Um, you guys are going to get extended rankings, all the basics, all the athleticism, all the production, it's all together. And there's profile. I think I hit 320 guys. So oh. I don't know if I, I don't know if they all made it into the book or not, because I just I was just a blind <laughs> rabbit doing the same thing over and over and over. Um, but they're in there. Um, and while we're talking here and answering questions, folks, I'll go double check and, and try to correct that uh, code and get that reestablished. So after you, buddy, whatever the next question. Let's do it. Is. All right. Derelict, thank you very much for your question. What are your thoughts on Ricky Pearsall? Well, I am a, I'm a big Ricky Pearsall fan. We talked about him a little bit last night on the draft, uh, the uh, mock draft show, and there's two versions of Ricky Pearsall. If you want the actual information, you need to watch him in 2022 and then watch him in 2023. He was asked to do two very different things, playing with two very different quarterbacks, a very good NFL prospect quarterback and Anthony Richardson who went in the top five and then a bunch of nobodies um, last year with a terrible offensive line, terrible quarterbacks, no offense. He was, he had like an 18 yards per reception average in 2022 with Anthony Richardson as quarterback. That gives you an idea of what he was asked to do and why his testing didn't match his 2023 tape where they were just like, hey, buddy, our quarterback sucks. Our offensive line is bad. Get open. Get <laughs> open. Go. And that's what he did. So I'm a big fan. I think he can do a lot of different things. I'm not as sold on his 2022 ability in the league as I think some people are. I think he'll be closer to 2023 Ricky Pearsall, a guy who can win inside, outside. But he's not going to give you a ton after the catch. I don't think he's going to do that for you. I don't necessarily mind to tell you the truth. I, don't um, I, I think I think he's he's capable of doing that. Depending on you, you sprinkle him in with a little bit of Andy Reid's scheme, and think all of a sudden there's more opportunities for Yak. But I, I need somebody reliable to hit those curls underneath, to hit the drags, and do their job, and not yeah. do what we saw last year, where everybody's dropping the ball constantly. It just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. I'm looking at something. My apologies, guys. I'm looking to yeah, see no if I've worries. got something else. <laughs> uh, Josh O'Neill, thank you very much for your question. Would you take Ennis Rakestraw Jr. or Chris Abrams Drain if they are available? 
um, I'll be very, very honest with you. The little I saw of the cornerback group this year, um, the Missouri guys have a lot of traits. I think that um, Ennis is a bit smaller. Let me. I'm going to pull up his his stuff here because I don't want to be repeating right. things that are wrong. I was going to say I probably have the matrix right here, still on this laptop. So if you bear with me for just a moment, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Ennis is like five eleven and one eighty three. Um, that's not typically what the Chiefs go for, unless you're Trent McDuffie. But even Trent McDuffie, I think, was two hundred plus um, yeah. or close to two hundred pounds, and you know, brain everywhere. But he's not the guy I think of when I think of a Chiefs cornerback. Um, he's a little bit smaller. I, I think that he's aggressive. I think that aggressiveness is uh, can be played against him in the NFL. And, and even Chris Abrams' drain is 5'11", 179. Like, these guys are smaller in terms of the weight than I think the Chiefs relatively want. They want that size, speed combo with the length and the, the aggressiveness. All three guys the Chiefs played last year, not named Trent McDuffie, have that. So I don't think that they'd be ideally taking any of them. If it comes down to it, though, I think they're both feisty, and I like Abrams Drain uh, later in the draft. Um, but again, it would have to be a fit. On, on day three, I, I don't know that they're going to be there. Uh, a lot of folks like Rick Straw as a top 100. Yeah, um, they do. So if it were to get to that, I wouldn't have a problem with it because I do think uh, there's enough physicality there for them to be a little bit more of what they want. Um, and DC, I did correct that. Um, it had a 40-person maximum, and it had been used that many times. Unfortunately, that's the default, and I forgot to remove it. So it should be back up and ready for you now. The code's RGR over at RogueAPC.com. I'll put it in the chat, too. Yeah, I would also say that based on tackling ability, that Reichstra has the clear advantage over Abrams' drain. Uh, I don't think that Abrams is a very good tackler. Actually, I actually think he's quite terrible at it. Um, so the aggressiveness is there, but he misses a bunch of tackles. And Rick Straw would be the guy I think I'd lean to in that situation. So thank you for that that Missouri question. It's always nice to see two corners coming out of the same class, uh, same school that are going to be drafted in the top, you know, 100 to 120 probably picks. So that's that's cool. Info, thank you for your question. Any chance we bring back uh, Prince Tego Winogo? Felt like he was better than Yang before the injury and can play both sides. I don't think so. My opinion. What about you? I, I thought he signed a futures contract. Maybe I'm wrong. Did he? I, I thought so, but I could be wrong. I don't know. So much I'll look it up. Hey, do that. I, but I agree <laughs> with you. I, I, I think they let him progress. I think they have Godric on the practice squad, the international kid that I think they really like. I know everybody's I going crazy for Zamet right now. I, and I think the, the cool thing is... I think Zaman's going to get the Godric treatment in that Zaman's not really going to be a factor this year. I don't think he's going to get a chance at the 53. But I love the concept we're going to see in OTAs. They're going to put him through a ton of paces, and we're going to have a blast seeing that. We might even see him in camp do a couple of interesting things. But I think it's Godric that has a chance to step forward. Um, that said, I do think that they are open for business at swing tackle, backup tackle, developmental tackle, all of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything on him right here. It looks like he's a U, UFA. According okay. to Spot Track, now that doesn't necessarily mean it's accurate. Um, yeah, but Wait that's what I see right now. He might be right back there now. <laughs> okay, Who thank knows? you, DC. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, I'm glad you checked it out, and thanks for your support as awesome. always. Let's go. Um, the, the other nice thing that I wanted to tell you is, is we've gotten a little bit. The whole concept that people write reports and go check out KCSN. They do a great job on their draft guide, and it's very specific to the Chiefs. Um, yeah. Kent and the guys do an awesome job. They write full-on scouting reports like old-school scouts. I don't do that. <laughs> I never have because until Dan came along, I've been a one-man show. And so what I do is keywords, obviously the production statistics, the athletic matrix, and then a bottom-line summary. And what everybody's gotten better at, including myself, but definitely Dan and EJ have gotten better about expanding what that summary is. So you're getting more of a write-up. You're getting a Daniel Jeremiah style couple of sentences that encapsulate him, and you're going to know more about the prospects. I can't help it. I, I I literally can't help it. I know it's supposed to be like this short, so I, I can't fit everything I want to in it. So we've got ah, no bigger at it. That's that's okay, actually, because I think we're walking that line nicely where you're giving enough information to give somebody who's just reading that and maybe hasn't read KCSN or The Beast. Yeah. The Beast didn't make it out yet, did it? We beat not it. Not yet. Not it. yet. He, we we beat it, but I mean, Dan's got like you know at least a thousand more of information than we do. Yeah, yeah. 
But like, if you haven't had a chance to read that, we're going to give you this year, you get more of a concept of what a player is by Dan's written description and of mine. Every now and then I go back to my old ways and I write a sentence, bottom line it, but you're going to get more in the rankings and then the profiles and everything else. So I hope that you guys dig it. And and Dan, I'm, I'm bringing that up because I think you've made me come around to my senses that I was short changing it. Well, that's good. Expanded I mean, I, that and made us better. I, I'll, I'll be honest because that's, that's how I, I feel like I didn't, I don't read a lot of other people's stuff. I'll be honest with you, but when I'm doing an evaluation, I want that on Twitter too. Like I, when I, when I put something on Twitter, I can't just do a small here unless I'm trying to like, you know, grab someone's attention and be gimmicky with it. But if I'm putting a, tw a tweet out there about someone, I want to show you what I'm looking at. So that, that, that just comes from me being kind of anal about the whole situation. I'll be very honest with you. So <laughs> if it's making us all better, that's all it's a, that's, all, that's what it's all about. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I think John, uh, three OT that could be available at 32. Who are they? And what's the best fit? What, what do you see happening? Available, it's it gets rough. Um, I think Tyler Guyton's gonna fall personally. I don't believe he's a first round player. I don't, but again, that's what you're talking about. Available at 32. I think Tyler Guyton's gonna be available. I think Kingsley Suomatia is gonna be around there as well. And a guy like Jordan Morgan, who also I think is going to be falling probably into day two. I think those three guys realistically should be available now. I think that the the guy that makes the, the most sense because he, one, plays both sides, plays in a zone-heavy scheme at BYU, is Kingsley Suum Tia. But I think the guy that has maybe the most pass rush or the, the most pass protection right now is Tyler Guyton. And that's where it would come down to is that, well, we have a guy who can play both sides. He's got a lot of upside, but BYU, again, doesn't play a ton of – I know they're in a power five school, but they don't play a ton of big, big name teams with really good pass rushers and stuff like that. So I'm personally Eileen Kingsley. I think the Chiefs would probably lean Tyler Guyton. I think I would probably agree with the Chiefs only because I, I know we had different takes on him from the senior bowl, but yeah. I didn't feel like he looked, I thought he looked markedly worse in terms of his kick and his adaptation to pass rush at the senior bowl than he did on tape. And I think part of that is exactly what you just said. When you play the big 12, you're not yeah. getting the elite of the elite. So I'm just, not it's sure. an adjustment. You it could probably play Tyler Guyton day one as a pass protector. Like I think yeah. you could do that. I think Kingsley would take some time to come along unless he in okay. camp, he gets there and he's just like, you know, doing it. I, I think he can get there. It's just about, yeah. can you have impact to push one? My whole goal here is can you push or, or beat one out? Is it an yeah. upgrade? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. And I'm not taking over. I promise. I'm gonna let you run this. I'm not. Oh, you go. For, I mean, you're good, man. <laughs> uh, Doctor Who, what's going on? Uh, Dan the man, do you ever wish the Chiefs had drafted Paxton Lynch in 2016? The Broncos jumped in and grabbed him. But I'll be honest, that was before I started doing this. That was before I really started to watch all this stuff. And I was not into the draft then. This is a whole different, you know, league for me, but no. Never in a million years that I want them to draft Paxton Lynch. Even then, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> there's, there's that old song. I, I think it's been covered a few times, so I can't even remember who wrote it originally, but said, uh, I ain't missing you at all. That's Paxton Lynch. There yeah. you go. And, for, and for, No one's uh, missing Paxton Lynch. <laughs> no one. For all fans of the 80s, you know exactly what song I'm talking about. <sighs> oh, sorry. I like, sometimes it pays to be old, man. Sometimes, actually, most of the time, you got that work ethic of a of a much younger man. I'll give you that much. Uh, ben, thank you very much for the super chat. What do you think about the Iowa cornerback Cooper DeGene? Um, I love Cooper. Uh, I do think he's more of a off cover player, a cover three type scheme where you can mix in some man match principles. I think he can carry well. Uh, I don't necessarily want him personally playing a ton of press coverage, man coverage, where you have to be able to move guys, uh, follow them around the field. I don't necessarily see that in his game, but he's aggressive. He comes downhill quickly. He's got that click and close ability. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he's probably going to be on like the, the Colts board. Uh, I feel like he is a, a Colts corner and they need corner. And it wouldn't surprise me if they took him early. I, I don't disagree with you on that at all. I will say this. I feel like outside of this particular injury, I feel like he has physicality that he, he could, 
adapt. He might be a guy that, in my personal feeling, could grow under merit and become a better press yeah, man guy. That's, that's honestly sure. what McDuffie did. So, And the only reason I mentioned that is because I think two guys in particular are going to fall in the first round from where a lot of the analysts have them in the top 15, and that's Mims and Dijon. Dijon, however I'm supposed to say that, I'm sure you can tell me. Because from what I'm understanding, uh, everybody is glossing over the fact that there are significant medicals there, and I think there's going to be some teams that are scared off by that. I hope so. I, I would love to see a Marius <laughs> Mims in Kansas City. <laughs> Give me the guy that might be the best tackle out of this entire group. I'm not man. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm and okay I don't care that. that he's a right, right? I mean, you don't think he can play left, do you? Or am I missing I do something? think he can play left. You I do, do think, think he can, can play, play left. left. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I don't care if they move Juwan. I'm super comfortable with either. his athleticism. I don't so either. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. I think you're getting I, the same player at left that you're getting it right from Juwan Taylor. I got no problems with it. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So, uh, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> I appreciate the super chat, Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, King Jamie, what's going on? Do you almost do you feel almost too comfortable? I feel like going from a top three defense into a top six, but picking up some guys for the offense is an even trade, and I'm way too calm for a 3 P run. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I feel like at this point we can – realistically assume that the chiefs know what they're doing <laughs> it's it's pretty fair to warn that they know what they're doing and they can get the best out of their team so whatever ends up happening uh, obviously it's not fun to move on from legerious Sneed, but i think they're going to be okay dave Merritt and and steve spagnolo have have the home cooking they, they know what they're doing they just they throw stuff in the pot and it always ends up good so you're telling me the strongest position on this roster that get coached up from nothing every single year is the one position they lost the guy at on this defense oh yeah i'll take that i'm good with that yeah, and I'm on top it. of it now serious folks driving while impaired is a serious issue you shouldn't do that but just like i said should somebody do something stupid and get themselves to fall a little bit now you might be able to add and that's why i put them on the thumbnail for this you might be able to add to what is a defensive front that was already a super rotation. It was already putting out good pressure and add a body that is unique, should we say the least, in the last five drafts, maybe? That's that's one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to put it. I mean, it. if you want to free Chris Jones up, send Devonder Sweat into the A-gap opposite him. He might draw three blockers. I'm not sure. Maybe. I... <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm I'm just not a Trevandre guy. A Trevandre guy. I I I like him well enough, but you, you guys remember it in the Super Bowl where they're like, "Hey, Chris, we need you to get back out there on the uh, on the field," and he was like, "I got you." Trevandre be like, right. "No, I'm good, Coach. Send somebody else nah. in there because he's not I playing." I got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got <nothing> left. <laughs> well, and that and that's absolutely fair. My my whole point is uh, with this new thing. Um, I like him a whole lot better at 95 than I liked him above that. That's my no, for sure, it's for like, sure. Yeah, if he's there at 95, I mean, okay, okay, you twisted yeah. my arm, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> That's what I'm here uh, for. <laughs> DJ, what's going on, man? If the Chiefs won a Super Bowl with Wanye Smith and Taylor, why not just run it back and focus on other needs: wide receiver, cornerback, and defensive tackle. Also, do you see the Chiefs ever drafting a tackle with below 34-inch arms? Go ahead, Ryan. Let's see what uh, you got to say about this. I mean, we've kind of predicted that they would just run it back with those three. Uh, we're, we're just waiting for Donovan to come into the fold, you know, week before camp, something like that. <laughs> you know, don't come to camp, Donovan. We know you're old. We, we don't need you to do that, but we like you. I, we do think that that could happen. You can maybe draft somebody a developmental later if you don't feel you want to go up and, or you don't feel that you have uh, the ammo to get to where you want for a tackle in this class. But to your other half, um, a tackle with 34, I think that's well within the realm of possibility. They get to 33? No. But I think I think they will draft somebody with 34. I want to say that Fish was 34 and a quarter. So I've got a little bit of evidence in the past that they'll do it. But, I mean, you got a guy with 36, they're going to go for that all day long. I think that uh, that 33 is their threshold. I think that if the guy's athletic enough, good, good technique, then 33 is okay. And that's why I was like shocked when I looked at Dominic Pooney yesterday and he was 33 and three eighths. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. That that puts him back on the board for, for tackle hey. for Casey, maybe a little bit. So 
<laughs> Another player that I think you probably have to spend 64 on him now. Yeah. But if you want to get him. Or trade up in the third. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That, that That's a fair point. Um, I don't know. I've come around to the idea that trading back isn't going to make me cry too much either. Because no, likely, be if, too mad. if they're stuck, they're not going to get a round one grade from me or from themselves at 32. So No, they didn't last year. They won't this year. <sighs> Doctor Who, what's going on? Thank you for the second question here that I've got. Am I the only one who hopes the Chiefs draft Lad McConkie? Just so I can shout, Lad McConkie. In a fake Irish, I'm not going to do it with a fake Irish. Maybe Ryan Vlad McClunky going down oh, here. <laughs> Come on down to the Irish front. <laughs> you can get him. Well, now that you're throwing it out there, him. Doc. <laughs> now that you're throwing it out there, I'm all in. Let's do it. Oh. Just for the just for the lulls, right? Just for the lulls. So I've got. <laughs> I think they're like sixth or eighth cousins in Ireland, and another set in Scotland, and they go back and forth, and I can't understand either when they get talking to each other. Um, they're they're not exactly the most uh, neighborly to each other, but it's all right. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to understand what's being said. <laughs> We're all just trying to understand what's being said from time to time, even in our own daily lives, especially with Ooh. children. You know, it's, it's hard, yeah. to, hard to understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Jacob, thank you for your question. Without getting a Sneed deal done, do you feel we should have kept Willie Gay for the price he signed? I mean... I think even with a Willie, uh, with with the Snead deal, I think it would have been nice to see him come back for that. But it does feel like what Cam Jones did in the final season NFL game of the, the season last year that they were like replacement level play for much cheaper. We're probably okay. Yeah, it it does feel like that. Uh, yeah, I like me some Willie, but. Everybody has a limit at some point. So I'm going to say this. It's not, it's no disrespect to Willie Gay. Cam Jones might be better in the long run. Between the ears. In terms of being assignment sound. That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Not the athletic stuff, not the come downhill and just wally mop, a uh, molly mop somebody, but between the ears, knowing what's happening on the field. He might be better. Willie did develop a, a thing for PBUs, though. Like, he got he better did. at that. It's because he was just like, hey, guys, you can't get right. over my long, my long <laughs> ass arms. <laughs> just, I can run and it. jump. <laughs> you can't get me. <laughs> I live. Ah. What's going on? Real question. If the Eclipse would have granted you superpowers today, uh, which ones are you hoping for? Superpowers, wow. huh? Wow. Well... It would be the uh, probably the work ethic that Ryan has right now. <laughs> sleep nah. does not matter. Actually, it would be the ability to not to not have to sleep right? ever. Right? That's what it is. Ooh. Don't need any sleep. I can work all night long. I never need sleep. I never need caffeine. Nah, good oh, to I go. Would take that too. Damn. <laughs> I was gonna do something similar. I, I want the little green um, time crystal from uh, Doctor Strange. All right. Marvel movies. That, that's what that'd be the superpower I want. But same thing, get more done, spend less time. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know, man. We we specifically for draft season, like every other time, yeah. It's nice to sleep, but for draft season, we uh we we got we got things we gotta do. Uh Raz Grizz, nice to see ya. What wide receiver do you think will be there at 32? I keep saying Xavier Worthy at 32, but I really doubt that he is there. Um I, I think teams are gonna be a little off put by his his 160 five pound frame 64 pound frame i think it's realistic to think that he'll be there but there's going to be quite a lot of wide receivers at 32 the, the i think the problem is gauging which ones are going to be available at 64 that's 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 Great. the thing but because we both kind of are on the same team of it's got to be tackle in the first round <laughs> because the drop off is pretty it's pretty stark it's pretty it's pretty serious and every time I say that, they come back and piss in my cornflakes and say, no, we're just going to bring Donovan back and we're done. We don't care. That's... We're going to let Wanya grow into it. I can't argue. Andy Hex knows Don't be more satisfied. <laughs> don't be satisfied. That, that, that's all I'll say. I don't – I'm I'm not of the opinion to just – it worked last year. <clears throat> I, I want it to be good. Left tackle hasn't been good protection-wise for years. Honestly, since Eric Fisher left, like that's it's been bad since then. 
Uh, we can look at numbers. Guys give up tons of pressures. <laughs> You've got so, a good point. I'm just pulling it up here just to look because I want to have an idea. And, folks, you can find this in the draft guide. Um, but, like, some guys that I think are going to fall. And, and this isn't just that I don't like them or I don't think that they're going to be good enough. I think teams are going to let them fall as well. I, I don't think Keon goes above 25 or 22. Probably not. If anything else happens, he could drop even a little bit further. Um, Troy. I think Troy Franklin will be there. I think McConkie will be there. I think Worthy is likely to be there. Um, all those guys I can accept. I like Purcell, uh, Pierce All, however I'm supposed to say that. You guys know how I feel about Jalen Polk. I think they're both going to be mid-round two, though. So as Dan said, the difference between 32 and 64 is, is the thing. Yeah. And I, I think you, what we might see is just like slight reach on FAU last year, because it was a second round grade that they had to take a 32. We might see a wide receiver do that same thing this year. Yeah, that's not outside the realm of possibilities, guys. Like, that's be prepared to maybe be upset initially with the 32 pick. Because I know a lot of people were like a little underwhelmed by another defensive end at the end of the first round last year. It, it's, it's possible that happens again with a player that you might not want at 32, but they have to remember there's no first round picks left on their board, there's none. There won't be any unless they're defensive players at positions that they don't necessarily need. That's possible That's fair. because of this yeah, offensive class. Man, I'm not. I'm just not ready. I'm not ready either, just guys. Like it's it's, it's tough. Um, so I'd like to uh, handle these super chats, and then I will get on out of here because I got some things to attend to um, okay, with the family. Chase, thank you for your super chat. The five dollars. What do y'all think about wide receiver Anthony Gould out of Oregon State? Uh, DB Jalen Simpson. I haven't seen Jalen. Uh, Frank Crum, tackle. Jaheim Bell, Miles Murphy, uh, offense tackle, Walter Rouse. So only a couple of these guys that I've seen. Um, Anthony Gould's a fun player. Uh, limit. I think he's a little bit limited with his size. He's a good speed guy, track athlete. I think he does well with the ball in his hands, and he's a deceptively good route runner, understands space and manipulation. So he's going to be a day three guy that I I think is is a is a fine play if you're looking for that speed, smaller, exploit everything kind of kind of player. But we we've seen the Chiefs kind of go away from that in recent memory in terms of. The speed short guy. It's been more of a oh hey Sky, you're stocky. You got big hands. You're supposed to catch everything. We're gonna draft you. Um <laughs> sorry, I, I'm I'm a little salty. I can't read into anything yeah. that you're thinking. I promise. I'm a little salty, guys. Oh. I apologize. I still I still believe, but I'm I'm a little upset that the Chiefs let me uh talked me into that one when I was <laughs> a little on the opposite end. Um Jaheim Bell is is a wild card. I got no clue what he's gonna be in the NFL. Neither does he. I don't. I was about to say, I got no idea. Like I'm almost lose a bunch of weight and go play slot receiver. He's a six foot tight end. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's weird. Can he go to more of an uh, H role? I don't know. I I think there's something there to work with. I think he's worth a flyer. I certainly do. Um, have you seen Jalen Simpson? I have not. I'm in, looking. In up my here opinion, like more of an athlete than a than a finished player um but he i have seen him make some plays um i i don't mind him a day three guy that's for sure uh in my opinion uh frank crum borderline draftable um had great combine because he's a linear athlete but he okay. is not very coordinated um the way that he runs makes me a little bit nervous um <laughs> I got some Wyo, uh, Wyoming defensive film. Um, I think I have some offensive film, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, so I'll, I'll go back and I'll check that. I've got a list of probably 10 or 12 players that I just, I'm just i just going to watch so I can get them on my stack. Uh, because now that this is done, as soon as we finish our updates here in the next few days, folks, uh, I'm going to start on the draft board. We're going to start drafting, stocking uh, the, the draft board. Each of us will do that. Uh, you're going to start seeing top five lists on NFL33.com. That's where you want to go because it won't be just straight out of the guy. It'll be our personal opinions. Hopefully Dan will have time to do some of those. I definitely will. And I think EJ will as well. So we're going to try to hit you with those kind of top fives, maybe top tens if I get crafty. 
Um, yeah. Miles Murphy is a space eater. Uh, not as much pass rush as I was like, but developmental maybe a little bit there. And Walter Ross is kind of the same way. I think he has an idea, but I don't think it's fully formed in his head yet. He is the guy who took over for one year at Oklahoma. So I, I think there's there's track record there. Okay, that makes sense. I was about to say the name sounds familiar, but for whatever reason, I couldn't couldn't really see. And also, I only got one game of Oklahoma offense. Like, what, what, what are we doing here? What are, yeah. what are we doing? Um, yeah. It's it's tough. But I appreciate the five spot there, uh, Chase, very much. And Brenda, thank you very much for the 20 uh, super chat. Here's to you guys, hard work, or to your hard work and dedication. And thank you, thank you for being here all the time. You're always in here, Brenda, always asking questions and interacting. And we appreciate that. So very much as you know, it's man, it's I, I tell you what, around. guys, it, it's what it's what this is all about. Um, so thank you very much for the support. My guy, D Mac, what's going on, man? Nice to see you in here. Thank you very much for your support. What's up, RGR? I can't wait to dig into the athletic matrix. Appreciate the work you guys do on it. Thank you. It's Ryan again. The, the athletic matrix is, is all Ryan's baby. He does all of it, and he grinds and <laughs> grinds and grinds for it. So I, I can't, I can't I can do. take any credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the patented Veach day three defensive back in this draft? Um, and who are your favorite day two wide receivers? So I've made no bones about wide receiver. Uh, Ricky Pearsall. Javon Baker, I, I think Javon Baker is closer to Amon Ross St. Brown in this draft class than he is to being an X receiver. Personally, um, I know that that's met with some people who don't agree with me. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, it's my opinion, and that's why we do this, because it, it's it's my opinion. I'm allowed to have it. Um, yep. What about you? What do you like on a wide receiver on day two? A guy that I had higher going into the season <laughs> that has fallen off some, but he is still really productive is uh, Kyrie – uh, Jackson out of Oregon. Uh, he's a guy that I think as a junior film, I think the Chiefs probably had him fairly high. And okay. maybe they're still buckling down on that, that he could be a guy. Um, I do like Ryan uh, Watts from Texas. Same kind of thing. He's shown some of the flashes the Chiefs like, but he probably isn't a consistent guy. He's probably day three. Um, he's almost assuredly day three. I'm just trying to look through a few others here. You know, <clears throat> they might take advantage of some of the fall off. Um, <clears throat> You know who's who's the big Penn Stater that that didn't? Kalen King is K, yeah is Kalen King a guy that they might like on day three? <clears throat> I think there's enough potential there that they could be. Um, he's a little undersized in my opinion, but I can't remember exactly his measurements. I'll have to go back and look. But do you think that fits or no? I think it does. Um, I'm looking at another guy here at corner, uh, Namaya Pritchett, out of mm -hmm. Auburn, six foot one ninety. Uh, nearly 32 inch arms. He's a physical guy. He's got good burst, athletic. He ran a 4.36, so he has that speed and he has the size on the outside to play um, in that man coverage. Be able to play some of their zone too. I think he's someone on day three that the Chiefs will be looking at specifically because of the way that Auburn likes to play their corners. You look at some of the guys that have come out. Um, I was pretty big on who was the corner that came out a few years ago. Plays for the Titans. Uh, Can't remember his name. Fuller? Christian. No. Fuller, no, that was that was LSU. There's a different one they drafted. It's uh, I'm I'm gonna draw a blank on here. So just don't worry about worry about that. And I'm gonna pull up. <laughs> Tony, you guys, my brain is going through a, a mind meld right now. I just I there's so many names. Where yeah, is yeah? There's dude? a ton of them. Kalen King. Here is into Kalen King's numbers. Jeez, I'm trying to figure that out. So he was 5'11", 190 with sub thirty one inch arms. Yeah. <laughs> And less than nine inch hands. He's got eight and three quarter inch hands. Like I, oh, no I didn't thanks. pay attention to that. The the sub thing, like everything else fits. Like they something that they could do on day three and take a chance. Uh, the length, you got to be pretty special. To there it is, stuffy and short arm guy. Ah, uh, McCreary. Roger McCreary. Thank you, Ocean. I appreciate that because I was Another struggling. Tower. Um, I like that guy. Um, he's small, but he he was good. Um, one of the risers at safety that I keep hearing about from uh, people that are out and about seeing pro days is Dominic Hampton of Washington. He's obviously getting overlooked by their edge rushers and, and obviously everything's going on in offense, but teams seem to like him a little bit. Uh, Oladapo, I thought we both liked him down at, in Mobile, but seems I'm a people fan. have fallen off. Yeah, right. I don't know why. I'm a fan. I think that dude's a tight end eraser in the NFL. Like, he's going to be good. Yeah. 
and I'll take it. Thank you very much. Um, Cam okay. Kitchens is the one that I have a hard time. I think he's more of like a a box like nickel safety dude. Like he could be the Swords yeah. kind of role. So I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe I feel that. DBs. Yeah, there's gonna be some good guys there. Like just look if you're looking for DBs on day three, look for size, length, and athletic ability. It doesn't matter technique. The Chiefs will teach it, and they've shown they will they will teach it. So if you guys just go on, you know the uh, the combine list and look through guys that have long arms. I would say I would say about 32 plus, and that they're that's what they're looking for, and that athletic ability, and uh, you'd be good there. So appreciate the 10 spot there, DMac, very very much. And uh, always as always, you can hit me up on Twitter with anything. And Chris, nice to see you back. It's been a while, man. Nice to hey, hey. nice to see you back in the memberships. So I appreciate that very much. Um, good looking lady well. got in there, buddy. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> uh, well, thank you, thank you for locking it down today and for everything that we've done through here. And we're going to continue riding it out, folks. Don't you worry. Yes, <sighs> we are. Um, I'm going to head out friend. tonight to see you know the the family, and I will have a members video this week. I recorded it last week. We, we've got you know been doing some some other family stuff. My wife's working like three straight three straight weeks um so i'm trying to and 12 hour shifts so like i'm trying to do more around the house and take care of avery and, and all that stuff so getting it done we'll, we'll get it in and uh, i appreciate you guys again get the draft guide we'll keep updating it until until draft day we, we still got some work to do so i appreciate y'all for being here and i'm gonna we go take a break hug the little blondie for me and uh, get some rest buddy Will do, man. Uh, thank you guys so much. I'll see you later. All right. Chris, welcome back. Appreciate you and the Super Chat. Very kind of you, sir. Um, I do love the lid, and I appreciate you putting the in the avatar. Uh, following along the whole time, there, there's a lot there, especially when Dan has to start when I come in mid midstream. Um, I am <clears throat> probably you're seeing some issues with my internet um, because I, I run redundant systems here at the house because you guys know how poor it is. Um, and I'm seeing some flickers, so uh, hopefully I can stick with you. But thank you for being here with it. Um, we have done a ton of work in this draft guide, and uh, this is the best version we've ever put out. Um, not coincidentally that it's the more, most contribution I've gotten from Dan and EJ. And, and Jeff and I have been doing this since day one. Jeff and I have a system. Jeff is the man. You're going to see more from him later this week. I hope you caught that on Friday. Um, but last call for Super Chats and questions, and I'll try to get to those. Uh, here before I wrap up so that I can get moved back in because I've been gone for the last uh, 48 hours with no power here at the house and I got to check the freezers and all that kind of stuff. I literally walked in to come see you guys. So I, I appreciate you. Um, Chris, <clears throat> what would Dwayne The Rock Johnson's aka the finals boss with the tribal chief Roman Reigns combine athletic score? Um, I would have to go back and pull his. He was before I started uh, – my tracking uh, into the matrix. Um, I might be able to go get his though. And I will try to get you an idea of it. Um, it it's always fun to look at. Like I, I have gone back and, uh, you know, uh, Justin Houston was before the athletic matrix uh, was around. I, I've continued to update and I've gone back and I've gotten his numbers. And so I have those in there and that kind of stuff as reference. So it, it'd be interesting. Now, Dwayne never made it as a football player. I think we all know that. He's he's a great entertainer. But, uh, you know, just it, it, the athleticism might give you a clue there. But I, I don't think that was the reason why. So we're just kind of we're just kind of rolling. It would be fun to see. But uh, we're not going to say that's why he didn't end up playing football. Bono, hope you're doing well. Mahalo for being here, buddy. Why is Counter Co <laughs> Coburn such a flop pick? Well, I, I I can't tell you, but I will say this. There's a reputation of the way that Texas football players are treated and how much is done for them and how much they don't have to do and they don't have to follow through on things. And it's been a problem over the years. Let, let me be honest with you. It, looking at the course of 20 years. Um, now, if you remember, I was big on his partner, Moro Ojomo, last year, more so than Colburn, um, because I just, I just felt like he epitomized – uh, a relentless football player more. Now I can't say that that's it, but I'm not sure what's going on with Coburn. I think it's a tale of two halves here. I, I equate Byron Murphy more to a Jomo from last season and, and sweat more to Coburn. Just my thoughts. I, I don't know if that's going to end up being true, but that's the kind of consensus that I'm getting 
uh, from guys that are at the pro days and are interacting with the players and other scouts that are there, we're going to find out. Um, but I don't think it was a lack of athletic ability. I think it was something otherwise, either attitude or or adjustment or intellectual. I'm not sure. Thank you, buddy. Uh, nice to see you, Xiaomi. Hope you <laughs> hope you're doing good, dude. Uh, I appreciate you, and I, I appreciate the kind words on social. Um, do you think that Rasheed Rice is to combine with the other passes with the Chiefs org will make them consider off-field concerns more this draft? I don't think so. I think they are confident in what they can do and that they can control their environment, and they're willing to take some of those chances. I can't say that I think that's the best course of action, especially after, like you said, a, a significant history. Uh, but I do think they think that they're okay and that they're managing players and they're managing these situations well enough. Thank you, DC. I'm going to get you here back in a second. Um, that's what I think is kind of their bottom line is they feel that they have more confidence in the locker room, especially with Chris returning. So if it's on the defensive side uh, with Justin Reed now with Nick Bolton, that they can keep some of those guys in line. <clears throat> they also feel that obviously with Mahomes and Kels uh, and and Tooney uh, and now probably Creed and Trey, like th they have the offensive like guardrails there. It's not a coincidence that something like what happened with Rice happened while they were not in Kansas City. You know what I mean? Where he's back in his hometown, hanging with his old friends, doing the old uh, the old thing. Now I know that they're training down there too, so like that's that's a bit of a conundrum, but. It definitely is something that I think when the team's together, the team feels it can manage itself through the players and the coaches. And I, I don't see them going away from that, unfortunately. Um, I would like them to be a little bit more cautious. Uh, anything new about Rice? Doctor, I have not seen anything, but I have been struggling to be um, connected the last couple of days. Um, last I saw is that he admitted that he was driving and he's being the polar opposite of Kareem Hunt and – facing everything out front and admitting to it and getting out front of it. And I think that's a good thing for him and his longevity in Kansas City. Uh, I still question the decision-making. It, it, it's a stupid thing to do. In an evening on, on one of the busiest highways in America, it just wasn't smart. So there will be discipline. I'm sure of that. I just don't know what it's going to look like or what the deficit is going to be for Rashid Rice. DC, thank you. I appreciate you and supporting us and everything that we do. We do do a lot, uh, but you know it, it's good work put in by good people in Dan and EJ and Jeff. Gary's taking a look at some stats too. Gary's going to give you his unique point of view as well. And uh, we've had some others help us a little bit along the way that weren't able to actually contribute to the guide this year, but we do have some other scouts, some other media members that are going to come on board and hopefully get uh, get all the way on board next year. Uh, and, and help us through that process. I do do cons some consulting for agents and hopefully uh, with some more teams as we go forward, and we're going to continue that. So it's 24-7 around here, and it all comes back to how all these prospects could fit in Kansas City. Not necessarily that they have to or they will, but how they could, and that's what we're striving for. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. Again, the link is in the chat. I'm going to put it uh, – Back in the description of this video, you can go there, use that code RGR. It is back and unlocked. Shouldn't be a problem. If you've never seen this before, folks, if you're new and you're catching us for the first time on YouTube, go get the draft guide because it's going to be fairly illuminating, especially as names start coming off on draft night. You're going to have a lot more information about them. So thank you guys for being here. We very much appreciate you. I'm uh, going to have some content tomorrow. Uh, going to continue, and, and I'm hoping you guys all seem to dig – uh, the, the GM conversation, I'm going to try to get Randy Mueller back. I have some others out there. They're going to, uh, I have some contacts that hopefully I can get some other ex GMs because I really like that perspective and how we go through this dynasty phase. We're going to live that up. And so when I can get that back, I definitely will as soon as possible. If you would listen to Mr. Parrot and hit that like, we would appreciate it. Sub as well. Get in there. Thank you, DC. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, yeah, let's let's cross our fingers. It's still a little bit iffy, but uh, the main power lines are back up, and so we're feeling pretty good. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you all for being here. Wednesday, Dan will have film. Thursday, our normal thing. Obviously, getting ready. We're going to continue the mock drafts the whole nine yards. You're going to hear a lot about the draft guide and the athletic matrix. They're both out there at rogueapc.com. Use your code RGR. Thanks for supporting us, and we will continue to support you. Have a great night. We'll talk to you tomorrow.